Hey guys, we're ready for chapter seven, which is the competition begins. The guy's nuts, Opera shouted. Looney Tunes! He threw another handful of cassettes into his backpack on the bed. Who ever heard of a competition where you have to outserve the other guy? I nodded in silent agreement. If you ask me, but no one had time to ask. Suddenly there was a loud knock at the door, more like a bunch of mini explosions. Opera and I both went cold. Who is it? I asked. More banging. Open up, weasel. It's me. I swallowed hard. There was no mistaking Gary the gorilla's cheery voice. What do you want? Opera shouted. I've come. For a minute, it sounded like he wouldn't quite squeeze out the words. He tried again. I've come to help you pack. Opera threw me a look. It's a trap, he whispered. Don't fall for it. The next voice belonged to Jimmy Jack. It was as smooth and slippery as ever. Come on, Wally. He's telling the truth. I hesitated a moment. Don't do it, man. It's a trap, Opera repeated. He yanked what was left of his Walkman off his head and stuffed it out of sight. I reached for the door, took a deep breath, and opened it. I barely got it cracked before Gary yanked it out of my hands and threw it open. Here, he growled, allow me. All right, Jimmy Jack cried. He put a mark in the notebook he was carrying. That's one good deed point for Gary. I stood stunned. It was amazing how quickly Jimmy Jack had changed his side. But hey, what are we talking about Jimmy Jack Huxterly for here? You packed yet? The gorilla demanded as he shoved his way past me. Well, yeah, almost. He began rifling through my backpack. What about socks? I don't see no socks. I was just about here. He spotted my open drawer full of socks. In one quick move, he yanked it out, dumped the entire contents into my backpack. Have some socks, he said with a laugh. Gary scores again, Jimmy Jack shouted. That's two points for Gary, zero points for not so fast. We looked back toward the door and saw Wall Street. She stood there holding her own notebook and a calculator. The idea is to serve in kindness and love she continued. And since Gary's present attitude is more harmful than helpful, I'm deducting three-eighths of a point from his score. She began working her calculator. Let's see. Three-eighths of a point from a previous score of one brings your current score to a total of five-eighths of a point. We just stood and stared. No doubt about it. Wall Street was definitely going to be a stockbroker. Then, without a word, Gary reached for my socks and started pull, putting some back in the drawer. Neatly. Very neatly. By the time we got to the dock with our canoe, Gary's stock, er, score was up to 25 and 7 eighths. Mine was a mere 23 and 3 eighths. He'd gotten the jump on me with the packing and stuff, but I was hot on his trail. Already, I'd cleaned out the tread of his high tops, put toothpaste on his toothbrush, and cleaned the whiskers out of his sink. Imagine a sixth grader with whiskers. I guess that's why they call him the gorilla. Now we were at the dock with the rest of the camp, trying to put our canoe in the water. I held one end, Gary held the other. I guess Dale figured by putting us together, we might become friends. Guess again. For starters, we couldn't even agree to which side of the dock to put the canoe in. This side, Gary barked. Put it over here. But Gary, I complained, hanging to, on to my end, there's more room on this side. But Gary, it's easier if we let go. Gary, let me have it. He lifted the entire canoe and spun my end out over the water. It was an impressive move. The only problem was I was still hanging on. Gary, I shouted as I hung out over the water, clinging to the canoe for my life. Gary, put me back. The first thing I saw in his face was a surprise, then anger, and finally, revenge. And why not? After all, here was his chance, a chance to get even and make a fool out of me, all at the same time. It was the perfect opportunity. But the thought only lasted for a second, because in that second he spotted Wall Street out of the corner of his eyes. 
Calculator in hand, she stood anxiously waiting to make another deduction on his score. Immediately, he changed his mind. Just as quickly as he had spun me out, Gary struggled to bring me in. But this time, things didn't go quite so smoothly. Gary! I shouted as he started to stagger under the weight. Gary! Kids ducked out of the way. Some dropped their canoes. Others ran for their lives as Gary lumbered this way than that. Gary, don't drop me! At last, he spun me over to the dock so I could let loose. But when I let go, the sudden weight loss threw him off balance. He stumbled to the left two steps, then to the right four. Unfortunately, he only had room for three. The fourth step sent him crashing into the water. He came to the surface sputtering and coughing. Of course, he was totally soaked and totally steamed. And of course, everyone was laughing their heads off. Everyone but me. I can't explain it exactly, but I almost felt sorry for the guy. Almost. I mean, here he was trying to help me, to do me a favor, and look what happened. I dropped to my knees and offered him my hand. Here, I said. He looked at me with suspicion before finally reaching out. Unfortunately, Wall Street was right beside me writing in her notebook. Good work, Wally. You get one and a half points for helping. Without a word, Gary let go of my hand. Of course, he went splashing back into the water, and of course, there was more laughter. So much for making friends. Two hours later, Gary and I had paddled about two feet. Everyone else had followed Dale down to the end of the lake where the river started. Everyone else was sitting along the shore, resting and eating lunch. Everyone but us. We were too busy going in tight little circles around and around to the right. And then when we got tired of that, we started going around and around to the left. I was in the front. Gary was in the back. Will you stop paddling so hard? I complained. Paddle harder, he ordered. Paddle to the left. The right. Will you please stop paddling? Can't you keep up? You're steering us sideways. Can't you do anything? Be quiet. You be quiet. And so it went. We worked harder and did more paddling than the whole camp combined. But wouldn't you know it, and by minute by minute, hour by hour, the phrase getting nowhere fast took on a whole new meaning. Bushed and beat, not to mention starved, we finally caught up with the others and started toward shore. But the others were already pushing off. Where are you guys going? Dale asked as he pushed, pulled his canoe beside ours. What's it look like? Gary growled. To the shore. I don't think so. Lunch break's over. What? I gasped. You've already put us an hour behind. Let's get going. We gotta eat something, man. We gotta catch our breath. Sorry, guys. What you've got to do is push out. Dale, maybe if you work together, this sort of thing wouldn't happen. Anyway, it's time to go. Without another word, he gave the nose of our canoe a push. Before we knew it, we were headed back out into the water. I was mad. Not only at Gary, but also at Dale. It wasn't my fault I had such a loser for a partner. Of course, if you asked Gary, he was probably thinking the same thing about me. I guess, in a sense, we were both right. Little did we know, we'd both have to change our thinking. Soon. Very soon. That's the end. Chapter 8 will be Revelations. I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Have a good day. Bye.